Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the auto cycle and it's spelled like O-T-T-O. But basically what we have with an auto engine, right? Um, long story short, we have um, fuel and air injected into a piston, not injected, but allowed into a piston, right? And I think they're sort of compressed. And there's something called a spark plug, and I'm sure you've heard of this. Your, your engine has a spark plug. And it creates a spark with that mixture of um, fuel and everything. Um, and that fuel is, is, is then expanded in the piston because it, it causes like an explosion, right? Combustion. And that combustion produces work with that piston expanding. And it does these things and it expands and compresses and everything. And it gives us some sort of work production, right? With that um, expansion. And that's basically what we're here to talk about. You may see the auto cycle referred to as the Bode Rocha cycle also. Otto, I believe, was a scientist who got his findings from, who, who helped figure out the auto cycle from Bode Rocha's findings. And you may see it in French called the Bode Rocha cycle. You may hear somebody else calling it. And that's spelled like this. But basically, you know that they're the same thing. Um, what we have with the auto cycle, you need to know four, um, four processes that are going on. And from one to two, we have an isentropic compression. And we know what that means now, right? Isentropic means adiabatic and reversible. Um, from two to three, we have constant volume heat addition. From three to four, we have um, isentropic expansion. So we sort of see that back and forth that we are dealing with with our um, with our gas power cycles. We sort of see that back and forth, and while this marker is sort of going dead. But um, what I will do is just switch up the colors. But then from four to one, we have our constant volume heat rejection. All right, so what we end up getting here, right, is some, um, we, we are able to deduce some things. Isentropic means adiabatic and reversible, right? So our delta Q is zero and our delta S is zero. So because that's change in entropy is zero, change in Q is zero, right? With this constant volume heat addition, our change in work is zero. And it sort of goes back and forth again, like I said. Um, we have this, wow. We have this, and then we have this. So basically, what we end up getting here is um, we're able to break out some, some processes. So let's start off with this first one, right? We know that delta Q is zero, and our delta S is zero. And remember I said that when we're dealing with gas power cycles, we're dealing with closed systems. So we can go ahead and say our um, um, Q net minus W net is equal to delta U. And since our Q change is zero, right, um, we have this. We're able to cancel this out. So our negative work out minus work in is equal to delta U, right? As you see, it's an isentropic compression. And we know that when we're compressing something, we're putting work into the, um, the system, right? So we can go ahead and cancel that. And we end up left with work, negative, negative work in is equal to delta U. Those can cancel out and become positives. And that delta U can become CV. And we're dealing with T1 and T2. So CV, T2 minus T1. And what you're going to have is a T2 higher than a T1 and a T3 higher than a T2. Um, T3 is the highest temperature we're going to be dealing with with the auto cycle. Okay, so keep that in mind. If your T3 comes out to be lower than any of your other temperatures, you might have done something wrong. Um, basically, I do all this flipping around to be able to get my positives to get work in to be positive, right? And then that's CV is simply because of our change in U, right? CV delta T because we're dealing with our... Um, ideal gas. We assume everything to be an ideal gas, right? Okay, that makes sense. Now, moving on to the next process, right? We have, again, a closed system. So we have our Q net 
minus our W net equals delta U. Our work is now zero, right? And we have Q net, which is our Q in minus Q out equals delta U, right? We don't have any Q out because it's heat addition, right? So we can go ahead and cancel that Q out. So Q in is equal to Cp T3 minus T2 because we're dealing with temperatures 2 and 3 right there, right? Simple enough. Moving on to the next process, um, we go ahead and get, um, let me see what yellow looks like. And you can barely see that. Eh, okay, let's go ahead and use this red. Okay, so from from three to four, again, we have our Q in, or rather Q net. Let me stop being lazy. Q net minus work net is equal to delta U, right? Now what we end up getting, um, Q is zero, delta S is zero, right? So that is zero. So negative um, work out minus work in equals delta U, right? And our work in is now zero because we have an expansion. So it's only work out that's being produced, right? So we have negative work out is equal to, um, you're gonna have delta U, which is CV T4 minus T3. But what we end up doing here, we flip this. So to get that rid of that negative, work out is actually equal to CV T3 minus T4, okay? And that, that should come out properly because your numbers are gonna match up. That T3 is the highest that we're gonna be dealing with, right? Um, yeah. Um, for the fourth process, what we're gonna end up getting again, our Q net minus work net equals delta U. Um, constant volume heat rejection, our work is zero, right? So our Q net, we have Q in minus Q out, but we have our um, negative Q out, right? So that negative Q out is gonna be, I wanna say CVT, let me just double check myself, CVT1 minus T4. Right, and then what we end up getting, right, is um, we flip this again, so we get our Q out is equal to CV T4 minus T1. And those are basically what you need to know. You don't need to memorize those because you should be able to work them out, right, based on what I just did. Sort of just try and break it down with logic and then see what you end up getting. But we also have some graphs that we deal with during these um, auto cycles. We can draw PV and TS diagrams. And if you really want to impress your, your grader, I suggest you draw both. They're not that bad. And, and, and they'll get you a lot of credit. Um, basically what we have with an auto cycle, we have our isentropic compression, right? So it starts off with something like this. So this is from one to two. Then from two to three, we end up doing something like this. And with from three to four, we end up doing something like this. Wow, that's a good dip. From three to four, we end up doing something like this. And you know what? I'm actually gonna straighten out this line. It's just, 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 ugh. yeah. And then from four to one, we do something like this. And these should connect. I'm just not drawing them to scale, obviously. But we have our one, our two, our three, and our four, right? And in between these things are happening. From one to two, you have an isentropic compression. So we technically have work in there, right? From two to three, we have constant volume heat addition. So we have Q in, right? From three to four, we have isentropic expansion. So we have work out. And from four to one, we have constant volume heat rejection. So we have Q out. And, and this is basically what we end up having. And it closed by this little um, 
four processes here. We have our QNet, which is also equal to our WorkNet. Okay, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. So your PV diagram should look something like this. And let me just draw, let me just give you space so you can sort of see what's going on here. But basically, that's what it should end up looking like, that little shape there. For our TS diagram, we have something that sort of looks like this. We start off with an isotropic compression. So we do this, we go straight up. Then we end up doing something that goes like this. Wow, I'm really happy with the line state. Then we do this because it's another isentropic state. And then we end up doing this. So we have our one, our two, our three, and our four, right? From one to two, we have work in. From three to four, we have, um, I mean, sorry, from two to three, we have our Q in. From three to four, we have our work out. And from four to one, we have our Q out. So it's pretty simple, right? Once you can memorize these four, this, this is really the only thing that I memorize. And I'm able to figure everything out with the rest of um, my tools and my thermodynamics knowledge and everything that I know, right? So this is really the only thing that you have to memorize. Once you're able to do that, you can sort of know how the graph is going to look and how the things are going to behave. Another thing to know, you have a certain um, ratio that you deal with um, in uh, the auto cycle. So this is called the compression ratio. And this is equal to the ratio of V1 to V2. This can be specific volume or the actual volume, right? And this ratio is just... Um, it, it, we use this because they might say like, oh, your cutoff ratio is, I believe it's generally between like 8 and 10. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's around there. You might say your, ratio, your cutoff ratio is 9. Um, so they basically are just saying your V1 over V2 is equal to 9. So you might be using that to help yourself uh, find some stuff, but that's basically um, what, what that means. Um, let me see if that's everything I need to cover. Um, hmm. Um, okay, so we also have um, this thing called efficiency, right? With our efficiency, we have um, obviously work net, right? Um, work net over Q in, which is equal to 1 minus Q out over Q in, right? And what we end up getting with this, right? We know that our Q out is equal to, um, I actually just solved for this, so I have it written down here. Um, Q out is equal to CV T4 minus T1, right? And I should have written these to the side so that so that you guys would have believed me that I actually, although you just saw me solve it out, so, so that's why. And then um, Q in is equal to, um, CV, uh, CV T3 minus T2, right? And those make sense, right? And then we can go ahead and cancel these out. So you end up getting that your, your thermal efficiency or your efficiency during the, the um, auto cycle is equal to one minus T4 minus, one minus T4 minus T1 over T3 minus T2. So if they don't give you like, and I believe they'll give these to you on a formula sheet also, but um, it's also good to know where they're coming from. And if they don't give it to you, then at least you know how to solve for it. So they might ask you what is the efficiency by just giving you, they might just give you the temperatures or something. And that's, you know how to do that. So that's really all you need to know for the auto cycle. Um, we're still gonna be doing some example problems, so not to worry there. But that's really what you need to know. If you didn't understand anything I did, please feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. And let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.